it is disappointing, I'm sure, not only to me, but to many, many citizens in this country, that a, a man who stood on the anti-hill, screamed to the high heavens that he was unfairly treated under the PF administration, that he was a victim of arbitrary detentions, that he was a victim of arbitrary arrests, and he promised the Zambian people that if he came to power, he would not want in the Zambian to undergo what he went through. And yet, it is the complete opposite today. We saw breaches of the fundamentals of the rule of law under PF. We are seeing worse incidents now under the UPND. What is even more disappointing is that HH has decided to turn not only blind ears to this, but even a blind ear and a blind eyes and ears. He has completely gone back on his word. What he saw as injustice under PF, he now sees as the things that are justifiable. I don't even have to go through the litany of our citizens that have been subjected to these breaches of the rule of law. You remember incidents sometime last year when people were being bundled up from Lusaka, driven all the way to a place, a remote place like Shangombo, because some UPND cadre has reported them to the police in Shangombo. Until it became so embarrassing to the UPND itself that Cornelius Mwetua, as party spokesperson, had to say this has to come to an end. Now, if it came to an end because he, the party spokesperson said so, mm. it meant that it was orchestrated originally by the party itself. We had never seen that kind of thing before. Never. That a person that has been arrested or a person or a citizen whom the police can send a decent call out if they want me at the police station. Surely they don't have to come at 4 a.m. to my house. They can send me a call out and they know that I'll submit to the police. So, you ask a very important question because it goes to the bedrock of governance itself. That's what defines what governance or misgovernance is. So, HH has been a big, big letdown to the Zambian people. And this is not even a political statement. It is something that is truthful. It is something that is... A, uh, in the public domain now. That a man that the people of Zambia believed would turn around the injustices that they saw under PF is orchestrating those injustices today, is allowing those injustices to live on. You spoke of, uh, you know, people being bundled on uh, police vehicles taken to far, far areas of the country <coughs> just to go and answer to allegations made by maybe uh, one particular individual who maybe might be, uh, you know, belonging to the ruling party yeah. as a, a one violation now. Clearly, um, the side of the UPND has been that uh, those that were doing the wrong or those that do the wrong things, the institutions that are mandated to investigate is the ones that is at uh, work here, not the UPND at all. No. You know, I've, I've, I've always said this, that anybody who is going to tell you Anybody who is going to tell you that uh, the police does not read 
the mood of those that they are in power and they are operating autonomously is still telling you a lie. They okay. will be telling you a lie. Anybody that is going to tell you, Eugene, that the, the police as an institution and the officers in that institution do not read the mood of those that are in power will be telling you a lie. They are very good at reading the mood of those that are in power and how to please the powers that be. Okay. Yeah. So, that I can tell you for a fact. Mm. Uh, there's, there, there's one particular statement which uh, the Inspector General of Police uh, reacted to uh, as, as we were ending the week last week. Uh, yeah. uh, IG Graffer Umsamba, you know, uh, uh, complained, or rather, he issued a statement to say those that are saying that, uh, you know, police is dentening the image of the UPND because of how it's carrying out its duties uh, are speaking on the uh, on the side of being ignorant and uh, he was reacting to what uh, UPND National Youth Chairperson Gilbert Lusoniso said when he appeared on uh, Radio Phoenix Let the People Talk because then him he was uh, talking about the police brutality that we've seen you know that uh, was reported in some pa some past few days or months now uh, as, 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 as being uh, you know maybe pushed by the government you know or the government having a blessing at, uh, at, at that brutality that was happening so there was uh, an exchange of words there one issued a statement on a media platform and uh, the other person re re replied to say uh, wow the police is not dating any anybody's Im uh, image when uh, conducting duties look look if 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 there is if there is any institution that is very good at decampaigning a political party is the police that I can tell you for a fact. The police are very good at decampaigning the government in power okay. or the party in power because they do stupid things. Sorry to use that word. They do things that are outside the civil liberties, the principles of civil, civil liberties of citizens. Mm. And like I've said earlier, nobody would believe, not even a fellow in Chaisa here, would believe that the 12 police officers that went, you know, to pick up Emmanuel Mwamba from a car wash, beat him up. I met him recently, I met him, you know, last week. I couldn't even shake his right hand because he's still hurting. He's still nursing injuries in his right hand right arm mm. no citizen would believe that uh, that group of officers is not denting the image of uh, the government nobody and nobody would, would believe that uh, they are not doing that on behalf of the government so Whereas, whereas it was a sad incident, the Emmanuel Mamba one, which is the most, the most recent, mm -hmm. it's very good for the citizens to see what UPND is all about. So, Gilbert Lisualis was right. He was very right in the observation that he made. And Musamba was wrong. And you know, that's what they always do when they've been appointed. They're very excited. We saw it with the Lemi Kajoba. They get very excited. As if I for the first time. But the day of reckoning will come. Can you say before that day hmm. comes, they would have finished the UPND. Can we say it's, it's, uh, it's uh, the politicians themselves that uh, tend to you know, make the work of the police hard? No. What, 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 what did Emmanuel Mamba do? What did Emmanuel Mamba do? They didn't send a call out to him. If the police had said, look, we followed this man you know, to the car wash because we sent him a call out, he didn't come. We sent him a second one, he didn't come. We probably sent him the third one, he didn't come. So we had to mount a money hunt. 
they probably would have had an argument. So what did what did the poor guy do? What did Esther Lungu do that they needed to go with grinders, you know, to to go and look for one vehicle which they suspected to be at their residence? Why didn't they send her a policy call out and say to her, there is a suspected vehicle registration number X, which we believe is at your residence. Under the following circumstances, there is a complainant over this matter. Please, will you surrender that vehicle to us? I'm sure, as a decent law-abiding citizen, she would have done that. So in what way do we as politicians make policy work difficult? We don't. I, I, I meant to ask that uh, uh, based on... Uh you know, what has been said when it comes to the police and uh, the government, them play, pledging allegiance to the government of the day. Because uh, it's been, for a very long time, we've always believed that, uh, poli you know, politi uh, polit politicians generally would, uh, you know, uh, command the police to do things. Uh, we heard that in the in the previous regime where, you know, the uh, the party that is in power right now would complain on the way the police would carry themselves the time they were in the opposition towards them. And it's a continuous discussion that goes on. Uh, each party that forms government, obviously, uh, you know, would want the police to do what they want. Look, the 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 nature the nature of the state mm. in the third world country is totally different from the characteristics of the state in the developed world. Right. Okay. Mm. In the developed world, even in a small country like Israel, the police, the police, you know, exhibit independence. Eugene, you read, you know, up to now you know that uh, there are still cases that are running against, against former Prime Minister Boris Johnson mm -hmm. in London. Because he's been under investigations by the Metropolitan Police in London mm -hmm. for having breached COVID rules. Okay? The, 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 you know, the police called him for an interview and he has ended up losing his part position purely on account that he, the man is under investigation. Okay? Prime Minister Netanyahu in Israel, he's been indicted by the police. You saw him drive, you know, to the police station for the police to go and take a statement from him. It, it doesn't happen in a third world country. Why? Because the state in a third world country is believed to be synonymous with the, those that are in power or the person that is at the helm of power. Mm. Okay? In a, developed, in a developed country like the United States, the CIA bugs the phone of the president of the United States, Joe Biden now. They bug that phone. Why? Because he could be a danger to the state himself. He is not the state. Here, OP will not do that. We don't know who HH talks to. We don't know whether the people that he, he talks to, he talks to them in the interest of this nation. They don't do that. So, there is a fundamental difference between the state as it operates in a, in a, in a, in, in, in a developed country and the the way it operates in the third world country. In the third world country, the state is synonymous with it. those that are in power and the person that is at the helm of power. Mm. You only come to learn the wrongdoings of the person who is at the helm of power in a third world country when they are out of power, not when they are in power. In fact, I'll tell you my position myself. I personally believe that even in this constitutional article that uh, the president must be 
must enjoy immunity mm. from arrest while in office is not is not right it is high time from our experience that it should be removed okay why do we want to continue as a country having somebody in the state house who is a criminal and wait until after five years why why do we want a, you know, a criminal to continue running the affairs of state of this country for five years because the article in the constitution says that he is immune you know from any criminal or civil investigations no the person that you put in the state house must ensure he himself or herself must ensure that he is above reproach and that he is law abiding during that period he must not be given a moratorium of five years to do wrong things. So those are things that uh, cause problems in third world countries. Mm. We, we, we get to look at, uh, you know, just uh, the few issues that have happened in the past uh, days. One of them was, um, you know, the resignation of uh, the Auditor General, which raised uh, a couple of uh, issues. And uh, there are people that feel that uh, the Auditor General was pushed to that level for him to basically just resign. So what do you want me to say? I'd love to get your position as, uh, of course, an uh, economic front on that. Is there pressure that was exhibited on uh, the resignation of uh, the Auditor General? Maybe just to... I'll tell you what I've yeah. discovered. Yeah. I'll tell you what I've discovered. What I've discovered is that... Uh, Dr. Sichembe was, I think, Accountant General mm. at the Ministry of Finance. And I've spoken to a few people within the Ministry of Finance and outside the Ministry of Finance. Mm. And the information we have gathered as EF is that there was a lot of wrongdoing mm. at the Ministry of Finance mm. during that time. A lot of wrongdoing. Somebody was telling me a story of how six million kwacha cash was withdrawn and just disappeared. You know, I don't, I don't, you know, unless and until Dr. Sitchin proves himself innocent, I will not canvass his case that he has been unfairly treated. No. Okay. Yeah. But anybody that has the money, for example, so sorry. I'm not, you know, one of the proponents of that school of thought. We get to do something also that uh, raised a bit of talk, and um, one of our issues now that people are thinking, uh, I don't know if this was just, uh, according to the people that are in government today, that was just uh, a stance <coughs> to win public sympathy, according to them. Uh, the, uh, you know, the briefing that was held by the, you know, the, the, the children to the former president with regards to the treatment they've uh, you know, been uh, given since uh, President uh, Edgar Chagwalungu, former president, of course, left power. They cried foul that the state is uh, uh, trying them in uh, the general, or should I say, on the media, as opposed to court. And they want to be taken to court to answer to, to, answer to allegations that uh, have been uh, labeled against them before the public. Yes. I think the issue there is mm -hmm. this. Firstly, the Constitution... <coughs> excuse me. Mm. The Constitution of the Republic of Zambia guarantees you and I the right to private property. You have a right to own property in this country under the Zambian Constitution. Okay? Mm. And that property cannot be taken away from you without the due process of law. Second point. Mm. I think the point that the Lungus were making was this short circuiting of that process by the DPP. If you recall, that press conference came on the heels of the DPP saying that he had made an application to court without trying, you know, or those that owned the property. And he wanted this property forfeited to the state. 
Now, if you, if, if you suspect me to be in possession of property that is uh, suspected to be proceeds of crime, mm. under the Zambian constitution, like I said earlier, I enjoy the right of the presumption of innocence. That I'm innocent until I'm proven guilty. So the way you do it is take me to court. Prosecute me. And the way you do it is take a statement from me. I don't have to read about your steps in the media. Of course, we are in a democracy. It is always good that the public knows what is happening to every citizen. But you don't do it in reverse. If you remember, when the DPP took those steps, the lawyer, Makebi Zulu, issued a statement. He said, uh, how, how can you go to the press before you even save any process, any court documents on us as lawyers? Or even on the so-called court accused? So I think there is a bit of excitement also within the DPP's office and the anti-corruption office, you know, over over these matters, and that's how they are, and that's why they are messing themselves up. Mm. That's why that's why we can't see the, the the expected results in this fight against corruption because why why You know, I mean, I I. I worked you myself, Eugene, you know, in local government. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember in the 1980-81 Shamana coup, the late Joshua Simuzia was DPP. I never, I never heard or saw DPP Joshua Simuzia go and hold a press conference that we have arrested the. the Edward Shamana, we are prosecuting, you know, Edward Shamana because he wanted to overthrow the government. And there are many DPPs that came, you know, after that. Joshua Smuzia, you know, Gregory Piri, a retired judge now. I never, I never saw them in the press. This excitement that we are seeing now from these small boys. Every day they want to be in the press. Every day they want to be in the press. Oh my God, that's not how that job is done. Can you give reverence, you know, to that office? Okay. Mm. So I think the Lungus have a right to cry foul that if you are going to try them in the court of public opinion, then it means you don't have a case against them. If you have a case against them, you do it quietly, you take them, you know, before, you know, a tribunal established by law, meaning a court of law, one produce the evidence, and then, away from the DPP's press statements, let the magistrate, you know, make a, a decision. If they are aggrieved by that decision by the magistrate, you know that they've got the right to go to the high court. If they are grieved by the decision of the High Court, you know that they've got the right to go to the Court of, to the, to the court of Appeal. If they are still not satisfied with the judgment of the Court of Appeal, you know that they've got the right to go to the Supreme Court. So why does the DPP want to make himself the Alpha and the Omega in the criminal justice system? I think that is wrong. Let's get to um, some of the sentiments that were also made. Uh, I remember uh, uh, you know, um, the member of the Patriotic Front who is also in the race to becoming, um, you know, in the race to the president of uh, the Petroleum Front, uh, Mr. Brown Mundovile. After that particular, you know, briefing uh, from the Lungus there, he issued a statement to say that the UPND, the way they are conducting themselves towards uh, the former president, is like his, his immunity was lifted already. Uh, can we say that uh, there's a bit of truth in that, in that statement there? With the regards, or maybe the question should be, how how is the treatment uh you know towards the former president is it sour when it comes to the current president and the former president i don't know i, I, I don't want to to speculate i don't know about the, you know or the nature of the statement mm. i can only i can only i can only you know descend that you know from from the circumstantial evidence mm. 
you know, of what I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. What I, what I certainly see is that, uh, you know, a church is gunning for ECL. No doubt. Okay. Okay. I mean, he can't wait to get a team. He can, he can he can make any statement you know that no i'm i'm not after you know edgar Lungu, you know his his officials can say no no he's not after you know the truth of the matter is that the man is traveling at the high speed on this road of vengeance against edgar Lungu. he said locked him up at mkoweko for a silly offense which he himself committed in mongo okay for the silly offense which he committed to excite people, to show people in Mongo that he, he was very popular. And he wanted, you know, to block the presidential motorcade. And I said it, you know, on many programs, you know, that if it were in other countries, HH would have been shot, would have been shot dead that day by the security people. Because he was risking the life of a head of state. So he does something silly himself. And now, now he turns around to be vengeful against the, the action that was taken against him. The difference, you know, that the position that I took at that time was that he, what he did was not reasonable. All right. Okay? And I made that statement when ECL was still in office. I said, yes, what has happened is silly, but this is not treason. I still went ahead to pay him a visit, you know, in prison. Not because he hadn't done something wrong, but because he was a colleague in the opposition. So there's no doubt that the man is still bitter from that experience. So all this thing about you know the lungus mm. is 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 targeted at ECL at the end of the day. So he has to harass his children, he has to harass his wife, you know, and he, and he, uh, stress the man and, and that kind of thing, you know. But you see what is what is really uh, saddening is that uh, HH has more important problems on his hands than ECL. He has more important things. The people here in the Chipata compound are going hungry. They don't care about ECL. As far as they are concerned, he's already out of power. What they want is for him to deal with issues of their bread and butter. This morning, there's a, there's a contingent of police officers on the streets in town to throw out the street vendors. Those street vendors are not the problem. They are a symptom of a collapsed economy. An economy which he promised to come and fix. They are doing that because they want jobs from him. And he promised them jobs. So my view is that he has much more important things that should be keeping him awake at night. And not easy help. Even if, even if he even assuming that he locked up ECL tomorrow, how will that improve the Kwacha dollar rate? How will that feed the people of Chawama? How will that reduce the, the price of fuel in this country? How in God's name would the locking up of ECL just turn around this economy overnight? So if he wants to listen to an independent piece of advice, it's Bwana. If ECL has done something wrong, the law will catch up with him. And you are not the police officer. Leave that to the police. In the meantime, get on with the business that the Zambian people voted you for. Let's look at uh, uh, previously. I, I know that, uh, I don't know, maybe this, this is a Zambian way or the African way that uh, when uh, you know a leader leaves power, uh, there is um, the issue of following them up uh, based on what they did when they were at the helmet of power. We we'll talk about uh, you know what happened during the MMD Chiluba Monawasa <coughs> scenario. Let's talk about also uh, Rupia Banda, uh, the late uh, uh, you know uh, uh, Michael Chilufesat as well. 
How do we change that going forward in our in our political discussion? We change we change that you doing by what I said earlier. Mm. Let's remove the article that uh, allows uh, <coughs> a sitting head of state to be immune from any criminal investigations or even prosecution until they get out of power. I think we have learned now from the past. Mm. Okay. And, and I can tell you, that article also has a, a, a historical context because we inherited it from the colonial uh, era. Mm. Okay? As you know, in the United Kingdom, the Queen is the head of state. The Prime Minister is head of government. And because the Queen is not involved, or the King now, King Charles, King Charles III is not involved in politics. He is he is given you know uh, uh, that 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 infallibility that he can't do anything wrong. Okay, mm. but now we have learned that in fact you can commit an offence while you are seated in the state house. My argument, I go back to it again, is we can't, we should not wait for five years. We should be able to submit that person to the police. So, I was Minister of Justice who moved a motion in Parliament against the Arab mm. for the lifting of his immunity. And I don't apologize for it, I don't regret, because we had evidence okay. that Arabi had done something wrong while he was the head of state and we wanted him answerable. I can tell you that it was not malicious. We didn't sit in a corner with Michael Sat and I, you know, and the, and the, and the tried to connive against the, you know Arabi. That's not my character. But when PF came into power under ECL, the same people that voted for that motion turned around and voted against it. Okay. Meaning they didn't believe in what they were voting for. That surprised me. But obviously, they exchanged the vote because he, he, I'm told the, the, the arrangement was that you know, Arabi made the ECL winning in Eastern Province. I'm not sure about that. But anyway, that was their, their time. But we need to get this thing resolved. And the way we get around it is that if you are head of state, we hear that you are doing something wrong at community house, the police must be able to call you and take a statement from you. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, President Kalimba, let's get to look at also something that uh, has been quite topical, and I don't know when it will come to be put to rest, or maybe we have to wait until, uh, you know, the current president leaves uh, that office. Is the issue of the president's uh, residence in this case uh, is uh, not housed at uh, uh, Nkwazi House, and that in itself has been a topical issue. We don't know what our law says about uh, where the president is supposed to stay. There is, there is no specific law that says that uh, the president must stay in a quasi house. Mm. There's no law like that. Okay. He can squat even in Chipata compound. Okay. But the convention, the convention since independence is that uh, the president stays at a house. The governor of Northern Rhodesia Mm. Sir Evelyn Horn, the last governor of Northern Rhodesia, Sir Evelyn Horn, his residence is what you see as state house today, where the office of the president is. Mm. That was the residence of the governor. Okay? Mm. After 1964, Kaunda built Quasi House. And the he started living in a quasi house. And the successive presidents have lived in quasi house. And there are many reasons for that. 
Firstly, it's easy access to the office. Counter okay. sometimes used to walk from Kwanzi House to the office. The president works long into the night. Not have a president when you are in When you are talking 16 hours. When you are reporting 10 hours. Okay? Men like Kaunda, they used to report, you know, uh, at the office at 6. I think I'm done office. He reads his, his intelligence briefing. He works late into the night. Okay? There are two bedrooms in Kwazi house. Mm -hmm. There are two bedrooms. Such that, you know, if the president comes late, comes back late from the office, <coughs> and he doesn't want to disturb, you know, the wife, he goes into the next bedroom. I remember when we were students at Unza, in 1980, in 19, you know, just shortly before we graduated, we demonstrated as students, you know, because it's not good job in those days, so we had a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. So we demonstrated, you know, over Zimbabwe, you know, because we are very politically conscious. Mm -hmm. Not my students, but my allowance. You know, my allowance was not an issue to us. We went to the state house, and KK came out, you know, to address us. And as he was addressing us, the wife walked across, you know, to him. It was about uh, nine hours, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Okay. She had come from UTH where she was uh, visiting a relative who was a patient there. You know? And then she, she whispered something to KK. And after she left, KK said to us, you know, I've not seen this lady for three days. They were in the same house. Some house, because of the nature of the man's duties, national duties, not masobe, I mean, to own I. Kusoba na ugu, kwangalo ugu. This is cheap, to be honest with you. Those of us that saw how, you know, men like Keke. Keke told us, I've not seen my wife for three days. Not because the wife was spending a night somewhere, or Keke was spending a night somewhere, they were in the same house. Because they would have a central committee meeting and the cabinet joint meeting running into the early hours of the morning. You can't go and walk into the bedroom where your wife is. So you go and spend. So there are a lot of advantages. Problem is that we are dealing with, you know, um, a young generation now that does not know the past of this country and the these things are not taught, you know, at the, at the, at secondary school or history. We continue teaching, you know, who discovered the Victoria Falls, you know, David Livingstone, when that is not even correct. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, there are advantages. The other advantage is security. Okay. The other advantage is security. Because, you know, the head of state is the embodiment of the security of this nation. So, so the security of the head of state is a, a major, major priority of state security. So you can't have a president using the same route every day to state house, using the same route, you know, back to community house every day. There is no security like that. So, but clearly, the president is not doing anything wrong. Maybe that's what we should be. No, it's not. It's not. It's not yeah. a question of wrong mm -hmm. or right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a question of wrong or right. You know. Yes, he is doing something wrong okay. because if something happened to him today, it can destabilize this nation. So, to that extent, he is doing something wrong. That life is no longer his life alone. Okay? okay? Mm -hmm. It can destabilize the nation. Okay? I mean, we, we were told, we have read that Trump's house in Florida 
is 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 far much better than the, the house he lived in in Washington D.C. when he was president. And Trump is a rich man. He could have decided to be flying from Florida to Washington D.C. every day, even using his own fuel. You would have said, "I don't want to live," you know, in the Oval Office, you know, at the at the at the, at the White House. Sorry, I don't want to live at the White House. I want to live in Florida, and I'll be flying myself in a seven in a Boeing seven three seven to Washington D.C. and back. He didn't do that, and he would not be allowed to do that. So it's not a question of right or wrong, or right and wrong. Mm. It's a question of these are issues of security for the head of state. And again, I'll give you another example. Mm. The president is not in charge of his security. Takes me back to the point that I made earlier. That the problem with the state in Africa, in Zambia in particular, is that it is synonymous with the person who is in power. But the president is not in charge of his security. The president must listen to what the security apparatus experts say to him. He's supposed to be directed. Again, I'll give you an example. In the 1990-91, during the 1990-91, you know, when the euphoria of MMD, you know, or, or came to the fore, they had the, the security people had reinforced KK's security. He had, he had more uh, security vehicles with him. And at a press conference, the problem with NHH was not even fun. Why would you never see him? Okay? Me had already started working. A BBC reporter asked KK and said, we see now that you have reinforced your security. Are you afraid? Your life? Is your life at risk? And KK, first, you know, oh, he laughed. That lovely laughter of his. And he said, young lady, I also see the people around me, you know, bearing guns. But I don't know why they are there. I remember that answer very well from KK at the press conference. He said, I don't know why they are there. I don't even know who brings them. I don't even know what they want. So I'm just as surprised as you are. The point that KK was making was, I'm not in charge of my security. I'm not in charge. There is, there is a system that takes care of that. Okay? Mm. That's the point he was making. So this is not manner about the right and wrong. You know, what and what. No. This is about the, the security system saying to the president you know i'll give you another example mm. there was a there was a district conference you know for unip in chongwe okay here now and it was held at the, the zdnc camp and the as the heads of the department we were asked you know to attend it was compulsory anyway not even asked were directed mm. to attend. There was a guard of honor that was mounted by ZNS. Okay? And when KK came, when KK came, he was wearing, you know, a green, green, deep green safari suit, which blended very well with the, the guard of honor. You could hardly see him. Why? Because I'm sure he must have been advised by the security people. Sir, this is what you wear for security reasons. 
So, like you've said, uh, President Kavimba, uh, presidency, that office in itself, you know, the assistant. So, meaning that, uh, you know, the current system to the president advise him to say, well, it's okay, you can be coming from... They the don't president. even advise. Mm. They don't even advise. Mm. You know, they're they are scared of losing a job. Okay. They don't even advise, Mana. They don't even advise. You know, they live under the principle, what I call, keeping a job by not doing it. Okay. Okay? Mm. If you want to keep your job, don't do it. That's a principle that I've seen myself in the public service. If you want to keep your job, just don't do it. That's it. But there is also another fundamental, you know, or, or issue, which is related to this. Mm. We have heard that, uh, there is, you know, there is some infrastructure that has been added on to that house. Okay. It's a personal house. Mm -hmm. Okay? At the expense of the state, money from the treasury. Now, there is no law that allows the state, the treasury, to spend money on my personal property just because I've become president. So that expenditure is illegal. It is illegal today. When HH is in that house, it will be illegal when he comes out. And he runs a risk of getting that property forfeited to the state. The way this property at the arcades was forfeited to the state which was supposed to be Chirubazi uh, Institute for Democracy and Industrial Relations. So, why, why do you want to, to be wrong when you can be right? I get surprised myself. Why do you want to be wrong when you can simply be right? Okay? So, he runs. Now, when they start following him up, you know, after that, you the same with journalists, you start holding interviews. No, but why are we following up a former head of state, you know? He's doing something wrong. Now. So the right thing would have been him being housed at um, Kwasi House? Not the right thing, the wise thing. Okay. Yeah. Let's get to open up the phone lines in case you'd love to be a part of uh, live issues. Feel free to call in on 0977 624270 that is 0977-624270 for that interaction. My guest this morning is uh, Economic Front Party leader, uh, uh, President Winter Kabimba, is my guest uh, as we are discussing pertinent issues. Let's get to hear what uh, your thoughts are as we pick up this one here as a first caller. Good morning. Good morning, Eugene. Good morning to you, sir. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Good morning, Honorable Kabimba. Good morning, sir. Thank you. Yet again, Mr. Kavimba, we are collided on the line to FM radio. How are you, sir? I'm Kasoka, the man who called from the very yesterday. All right. Mr. Kasoka, good to have you here. Talk to us. Yes, Mr. Kavimba, in 2011, I was there. I was uh, quite a late when you moved the motion to remove the unit of Lutia Panda. And the... Uh, from the look of things, there was a lot of objection from the MP. And from my own observation, you didn't reach the two state requirement that was it. You were supposed to be uh, uh, achieved. Mm. If we had done the remo removal of his immunity, I think it was done illegally. First of all, um, I think this is the best time now for you to tell the nation how many people were in parliament on that day, and how many people voted to have the immunity uh, removed? Let's see if it amounted to two thirds. From my calculation, we insisted on moving the motion, even when people objected. I think you remove the motion, I mean, you, you remove the, the, the Arabic immunity, I think on less than 100 people. <laughs> you know, I think it was 98 or so. You know, it was far less from the two thirds required the threshold. Mm -hmm. Now, there's another question. Uh, if you 
written a small book. I've written a book. Mm. There's a chapter I've entitled Fighting Other People's Battles. From my observation, you've been fighting Lumbu's battles from way back when he was fighting Yaka Inge. It's like the moment you mentioned that he was your classmate, Eka Lumbu was your classmate, I think the narrative has been quite funny and really twisty, if you know what I mean. Uh, you see, beside me, at the longest method, even when you know that he broke some of the basic principles of the Constitution. For example, when somebody is petitioned as president, he is supposed to stand as captain and leave the speaker to act as president. You ignore know that and simply look at it as normal. There is another provision in the Constitution which says if somebody is an MP for a, for a constituency, for example, Rusambo, was an MP for a constituency, you cannot appoint him as provincial minister. You know, you cannot have MP uh, the, the, like Rusambo was, and then at the same time, I think it is that call one zero one zero or at one zero four something they have said. <laughs> So we are at, um, okay, I want you to, to, be, to be quick. Yeah. You can. Yeah, I'm yeah. concluding. Yeah. So, it's not what I'm saying. Parliament wants to remove the image of a president. And the same parliament wants to restore immunity. So, in short, what I'm asking, who restored this Rupia Bandar immunity? Was Parliament at this time convinced to restore? Thank you so much. We appreciate it. I'll let you respond to him because he's uh, asked a number of issues that he wants you to cover. Uh, look, if Mr. Kasoka, Kasoka mm -hmm. is writing a book, let him revise you know, that book. Okay? Mm. Mr. Kasoka, if you are, I hope you are listening. If you are writing a that book, sir, please revise the chapters in your book because your facts are wrong. Okay. Fact number one, which is wrong. At the time when he, I moved the motion to strip late President Rupia Banda of his immunity, it didn't require a two-thirds majority. It was a simple majority. Go back to that, to that article in the Constitution at that time. So correct that in your book, sir. Number two, the small group of the UPND, sorry, of MMD then, and UPND walked out of parliament. The quorum was still maintained, and the speaker went ahead to conduct a vote. And the vote was unanimous. Correct that in your book. Fact number three, which you need to correct. There is no constitutional provision which says if you are a member of parliament, you can't be appointed minister the way Rusam was appointed. Wrong fact. So if you want your book to sell, please correct those facts. Thank you. All right, zero nine double seven six two four two seven zero is uh, the number that you're using to get you to us. Good morning. Morning. Yes, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, my name is Mwaseza Bosch. Did you talk about London? I'm London. Good morning. Good morning, thank you. I'm uh, I've been always advising you, Mr. Winter that when you are giving chance to speak to the people, yes. as you are claiming that you are a leader of a political party, Something which has got substance by people in their listening there and they'll say, Yes, this one is a, a political leader. Why are you Who calling if what I'm saying has no president? substance? Why are you calling in? How do you come? Hello? Why are you calling in if, if what I'm saying has no substance? Just ignore me and get on with your work. No, uh, uh, because you, 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 want to be, you want to be my leader in one of these days. Not you yourself. Because it, it, it doesn't matter if I don't vote for you, it's the majority. 
God yes. for you, you'll be my president. But exactly. I need to guide you before you become a president. Thank you for that confession. You cannot come there and start talking about the uh, agency house. Agency cannot fail to renovate his house if he managed to build all that house. How can fail to renovate just a few, few things to, he, can, he want to put there? You have been aligned to the Zanians that the agency uh, constructed a road which goes to his house. Are you sure that road is only ended that is used to treat it? Or it does it end at the cable? That's why I would say. The line, the line is breaking a bit, sir. Hello? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying the line is uh, breaking slightly. Okay. Uh, you may have to call us back. I don't know because uh, the line was... Uh, no, I've heard what you have said. Yeah. I've heard what they have said. All right. So uh, if you've heard, then uh, maybe let's pick up some more so that uh, maybe we can have three uh, in total that you can respond to. Okay. Hello. Good morning. You're through to live issues? Yes. Yeah. Good morning. 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 I hope you know. We know. election. Submission there. Uh, let's bring in one more call, then uh, we can put a hold to the calls uh, as I allow my guests to respond to the submissions. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Uh, we can hear you. Good morning. Yes, yes, we can hear you, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Yes, Uncle Joe, please go ahead with your submission. Uh, you know, one problem that you have, uh -huh. you can't support anything that someone does. That's the main problem. And you don't have that opportunity or that chance uh, to advise your colleagues. What you are there for is to condemn. That's what you only know. You just condemn and condemn. Uh, you even know, I even know, that you are a small leader that is leading a small group of people in this country. And you never be the president, and you even know yourself that you never become the president of this country. Now, instead of advising a colleague, you know, the Sawayama.
Baba gudu muri business ni bandi ni byo bandi ni makatin si bandi ni ne bantu mu ide ni change to. Ori nangu kula songo ni conclusion. Nangu kula songo kwine. Brother Dina ima uta ka keko ba ala masiki lenda zeko ba ala shomba. You can't manage to employ all of them. If you are under a regime when you are in government, did you employ all the street vendors? These street vendors, they are there in Kaunda, we are there in MMT, we are there in Kiev. They are still there, they will still be there. So let's learn to advise one another not to incite violence. So these people praise against the government, against the world. Pray very few, Mr. Master, so and so and so. I rest my case. I'm waiting in June, so I'm going to go to Thank you so much, Uncle Joe, for your submission. Uh, President Kabimba, I'll bring you in uh, based on those allegations there. Well, just tell your Uncle Joe that he, if he doesn't understand English very well, he should just own up. Mm. Uncle Joe, what about me? I'm going to go to the road. 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 I'm going to I've not incited anybody. Chamene na kamba ni ukamba kuti HH mwine mukamwa kake. Anakamba ati ine ni kabwela ine. Imamoza muzankara na njitu. Anayi kuzenguluka na kapamela kaunga. Ati muvuti kama ningi mu PF. Ine ni kabwela ine muzampo kula 25 kg. Mnani kumvela baya? <coughs> Ba ba ati mane ba brother Joe mm. Uncle Joe <coughs> excuse me Munani kumvera mweka anani ukamba kamwa kake sindi nayo kumumanga kamwa ori kumusegula kamwa So why are you blaming me today Why are you blaming me today What wrong have I done I'm just reminding the man about what he himself voluntarily said as an adult when he was campaigning Street vendors wana liko anda MMD. But anaka babu anji efe. Nisapa nika kupasa ni nchitu. That's what he promised them. And they are waiting for those jobs as they are street vending. So, it is you that are supporting him that are supposed to go and advise him. Please, do the man a favor. That is how they used to praise Singh ECL, just like that. There were other, you know, Uncle Joe's like you, under PF. Go and advise the man. Because you are speaking for yourself. You may be even speaking from a tribal angle. There are other people out there that are going hungry and they are not happy with the, the UPND regime. And whether or not I don't, I, I, I become president is neither here nor there. One thing that is fundamental is that I'm a citizen of this country. I'm a citizen of this country. I'm a shareholder of this country. And I don't want to be governed by somebody who is wrong. Even if I'm not president. And that I'll talk. At least you've said that I've got a small following. At least you have considered. That is important. I thought you were going to say I'm just alone with my wife. So, you, the praise singers of HH, do him a favor and tell him the truth. Don't allow him to walk around like a naked emperor. Because you'll be, you'll, you'll be the ones that are killing the man. And if you continue like that, HH won't go beyond 2026. That I can tell you. All right, let's see if we can uh, allow uh, some few more calls uh, before we get to the end of the program. 0977 Be as brief as possible as you get through on the line. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is that live radio? Yes, you're through to live radio, sir. Who do we have on the line? You have Mr. Nsensema. Mr. Nsensema. Nsensema, sir. Nsensema, good to have you here. Where are you calling us from, sir? I'm calling you from Kitwe. Okay, talk to us. You know, 
historian are very good. Because when you are a leader, you need to sit down and begin to think if you fit to share it with Yes. That advice you have given here to Tila, you know, you just have to watch your head. It's very true. You are actually showing love to the president right now. I hope you, the, the interviewer there, who keep that on record so that the man has a problem with another leader that is going to come into power with that house where have some other features there. The Lord has been, uh, uh, has been tied there and many security features could have been put in that house. We hope he's able to listen so that he, he doesn't have a problem in the future. Now, let me talk about that person who has a land that the must keep you be Mission, Mr. Hansen, all the way from uh, Kitwe. Let's uh, bring in the last three voice notes uh, that I have uh, received via WhatsApp this morning. Uh, obviously, we wouldn't uh, be doing justice if uh, we left our friends on WhatsApp hanging without obviously being heard. Let's start with this one here. Uh, Mr. Kalimba, thank you for correcting me. Uh, just a, a previous caller. You know, there are people that just like talking just because they have to talk. Thank you for correcting all those causes. Then there are other people out there um, out here who are also saying, ah, but he, you know what this man is saying is wrong. Thank you for collecting all of Indeed, we've never seen such clauses where I say a sitting MP of the constituents cannot be appointed as <laughs> official minister. You know, that is very wrong. That is very wrong. People must not just wake up from their blackness and come and mislead the people. 
If they want to please their party or their leadership in the party, please they let them first get facts. Good morning, live radio, and good morning, Wawinda Kabimba. Uh, Wawinda Kabimba, you have never loved the president from the time he was in opposition. Wawinda Kabimba, you can, we can never, you can never say anything good about the president because you hated them ever since. So, just stay back. We don't want your advice. We don't want anything because we, the president won the, the with the majority without your vote, without your members' vote. So there's nothing sinister that you can say on uh, the president as good thing that he have done. So <clears throat> are you telling us that there's nothing that the president has done? Look at the CDF. We have brought in CDF. <laughs> All members of parliament, they can now utilize that CDF. <laughs> Even in PF, we have members of parliament like Kachibia. And uh, we have a lot of people uh, that are benefiting from CDF. Look at the resentment of or introduction of uh, buzz, uh, meal allowances in, in, in government training institutions. All that you cannot see. Look at the uh, free education from grade 8, which has been introduced to grade 12. Are you telling us that you are blind? So up with uh, my, 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 my big man. Come and bring alternative uh, ideas. Zambians now uh, have awakened up. They are looking for a position that can give alternative not hate speech, no. So, what we are saying is that you can never appreciate the president and be it to you because we don't want your advice. Uh, let the president wait. Yes, the issue of meeting you, it will be sorted out. All of us, we are feeling the impact, but that you cannot decampaign the president over the issue of meeting you. So, watch and see. The two, the, 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 the one million different votes that we, we, uh, we amassed, in 2026, I'm telling you to be 5 million. Watch and see. This is Zambia, I'm telling you. Opposition, you have nothing to offer. So, uh, uh, just uh, be the way you are. We don't want your advice. This is comment from Mrs. here. Thank you. Good morning, my best man, Eugene. And good morning, uh, President Winter Kabimba. Uh, President uh, Winter Kabimba, uh, you are a blessing to this country. Uh, why I'm saying so, because uh, you have got full of wisdom and uh, uh, knowledge, so to say. We don't have politicians in this country who thinks like you. That is the problem that we have in this country. It is my prayer that we can have politicians who thinks like you, then we are going to have a better Zambia. Because this is our country. What, are, what, what, what is going on in this country right now with this government of UPND and President HH is a terrible, to be honest with you. Today I was, I was, past, I was passing a, a, a town. I find a lot of officers, police officers with guns and so on and so forth, uh, removing vendors without any notice and those people they are preparing now to start paying uh, to marendi twa kumanyumba so on and so forth and this time vajabantubalubana which is very bad present winter kabimba we need you in this country that you can save us uh you can save us to this uh upnd uh government we need you, we need your, 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 your leadership, so to say. Because President HH, he has failed completely. Look at the price of millimil. Look at the price of fuel. They promise us heaven and the earth. But what they are doing right now is terrible, it's wrong. We are dying with this government of UPND and President HH. Mr. Gabimba, help us. You have got experience in this politics, Vamdala. You are a man. Eh? You are a man. I know that UPMG guys, they are going to call and they start now telling you, hey, what, 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 don't worry about UPMG. Those are pressing us. Like the way they are voting on the life, they want to show like they are supporting and so on and so forth. You know, they are crying. We are behind you, Mr. President Kabimba. God bless you, sir. All right. Thank you so much uh, uh, to all those that uh, reached out on us uh, using the WhatsApp platform as well. We had to give you 
uh, uh, you know, an opportunity to be heard as well. Uh, President, I'll let you respond to those and uh, we can uh, call it a wrap today. Well, uh, <coughs> thank you very much, Eugene. I think, I think the bottom line is this, to our colleagues in the, in the UPND, thank you very much for those that have followed the, this program and the, uh, agree with my, my views on many of the issues. I don't expect everybody to agree with me. You know, this is a democracy. But uh, when you start calling on me, you know, to love HH, you're talking to a, a wrong man. I don't have to love the, I don't have to fall in love with the, the president. No, that's, that's not, uh, even the 2.8 million people that voted for him, it was not out of love. They voted for him because he promised to come and improve their livelihood. That's why they voted for him. They didn't vote for him out of affection. Okay? If what I'm saying is not enough advice, you know, or to HHE, then you should have a to know, no, a party to get a convoy. That's what the members say. Because I think I'm rendering very